I'm Pastor Greg Enerlein. Welcome to Bible 180, my incomplete highlights from each book of the Bible in 180 seconds. Jesus says Moses wrote this book good enough for me. It covers thousands of years in just 50 chapters. It was written to show humanity, and in particular God's people, how they fit into a chaotic and sinful world and who they should be listening to, namely the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. From the flora and the fauna to the heavenly diorama, creation was there, and it was good before Adam even showed up. Nevertheless, humanity is the crown and the stewards of the created world. God takes a more hands-on approach when creating Adam and Eve, but enter sin, death, and the deceiver. All of creation's rhythm is disrupted, including the relationship between Adam and Eve. The root of the problem is ignoring God's clear word and trusting in one's own judgments. The problem is not ignorance. The problem is pride, saying, I know better than God, but there is hope. While the great promise of Eden has been dashed, Adam and Eve are left instead with a great promise. The serpent is warned, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. The flood demonstrates a simple reboot do. Getting rid of the bad apples won't work. Sin and death come off the boat with Noah and his family. So God sets about showing us that trust is the only solution through a more personal relationship with a single family. The patriarchs are far from perfect, like really far. But trust becomes a requirement and the distinguishing feature of God's unique relationship with his family. He begins by calling Abram to a foreign land. Once again, we see the promise will come through a future child. Though Abraham is one man and one family, yet through his offspring, all nations will be blessed. Isaac receives a wife by faith. Jacob is conniving, but at least he values God promises and he wrestles to hold on to those promises. 14 chapters make the Joseph story the most detailed and perhaps the most important. Joseph is a child of promise, the beloved son of Jacob. He is to be the savior of Israel. Although he does nothing to deserve it, he is unfairly hated and reviled, sometimes precisely because he is upright and honorable. I'd argue it's the most important Christological passage in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish the saving of many lives. Genesis is about patience. Adam and Eve are impatient and punished. Noah is building an ark for 100 years. Abraham waits 25 years for a baby. Jacob has to wait many years to return to his home. Joseph has to endure betrayal, exile, and slavery for decades before coming to the rescue of God's people. At the end of the book, Genesis, Jacob's family is still waiting in hope for God to accomplish all that he has promised.